Well, hi everyone. I'm Joe Rentlin with a retro view of WCW Thunder from June 14th, 2000. Well, in the Norfolk scope, we get Kevin Nash uh, chasing after Vince Russo, and all we were missing was a Benny Hill music. Oh, and then Jeff Jarrett gets kidnapped by uh, Kevin Nash, and deliverance references are made. Nash threatened to do a lot of nasty things to Jeff Jarrett, the ch 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 chosen one, on cable TV. I don't know why Thunder was ever invented. It was the most painfully unnecessary mainstream wrestling show ever. There have been more unnecessary wrestling shows, but this got quite a bit of hype behind it and everything, and there was quite a bit of money put into it, and it was, in fact, it was on TBS. It was on a, it was in a pretty big time slot. And it was also featuring the stars of WCW. By this point, it was featuring the scraps of WCW, because WCW was just scraps of a wrestling company at this point. Vince Russo's booking did not help at all. So we have the new blood arriving, and it's Kevin Nash uh, being behind them in the car. Apparently, the uh, limo driver has no idea how to use a rearview mirror, the side mirrors, or maybe he was blind. They got driven there by a blind driver. How the fuck did they get there alive? So, unfortunately, Hina was no longer on commentary, so uh, Shivani and Mike Tanay had to pick up the slack, much like Shivani and Scott Hudson had to pick up the slack on the on Nitro, and then on the pay-per-views, and boy, WCW is just a goddamn train wreck at this point. So, we get the new blood arriving. David had some of Rick's uh, shaved hair um, on his on a necklace, on you know, around his neck. That's actually shit they were doing, because Ric Flair was retired. Ric Flair would never show up again on WCW programming. Except he totally fucking would. So, Jarrett then says he will face Kidman because of what Kidman did in that match against Hulk Hogan where, you know, Kidman just suddenly decided, hey, you know what I fucking had with the new blood. I'm just going to not align myself with Hulk Hogan, but just say, fuck it, I'm going to turn babyface all of a sudden. Made no goddamn sense. Russo and David, um, they show clips of the head shaving and that kind of stuff and Nash getting beat up by uh by Goldberg and then Nash shows up and says he will shove a bat up Vince Russo's ass and chases after him and he's gradually making his way towards him I thought Jason Voorhees moved slow and I know I know that Kevin Nash had you know a bad leg at this point and he was older and had had, had injuries and he's also six foot ten so I'm not expecting him to necessarily run but fucking hell, this must have been, like, th this was so bad to shoot. Now, Kevin Nash pursuing anybody, he catches you, it's it's bad, uh, you know, in general, because he can beat your ass. But Vince Russo, well, actually, Vince Russo's not athletic at all, so I guess I really shouldn't believe that he could outrun Kevin Nash. He probably can't even outrun a dead, no-legged antelope. So, then, um, Nash hits Miller with the bat. That's the best use of Ernest Miller, getting his fucking ass beat. Ernest Miller, one of the most goddamn useless twats ever in wrestling. And then he, you know, beats up everyone, and everyone deserts Russo, and then Nash uh, keeps chasing him. Candido shows up, uh, and Bam Bam Bigelow and him are going to take on Chronic. This isn't the only time we're going to see all these guys. There isn't all that much. Three minutes top, high times, or high time, or high, uh, high times of Ridgemont High, whatever the fuck. And then, you know, Candido gets beat. But Bam Bam takes it to both members of Chronic afterwards. Okay, we then get uh, Big Vito and Johnny the Bull, and they have a match, sort of. I guess it's a dis uh, you know dissolving of this friendship, because Vito says, hey, you know what, get a moment with the Hardcore Championship. Then he beats Vito's ass and puts him through a table with the DDT outside. Here comes Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash kept showing up. It was like 2,000% Kevin Nash on this show. And then he beats him up, takes a Hardcore Championship, I guess, even though we don't see him with a Hardcore Championship again. We didn't get footage of David Flair and Miss Hancock looking awfully friendly with black and white footage. GTV makes its way to WCW. CTV. I think the C stands for... Moving on. Uh, Shane then shoots on Buff Bagwell. Shane Douglas, that is. And then Buff attacks. And then here's Candido and Bam Bam. We're reforming the triple threat with every guy not being in great shape. I mean, when Bam Bam's the one that's, you know, probably in the best shape out of anybody, that's saying something. Boy, can't, boy, Shane Douglas is just fucking wiped out at this point. Then, Chronic comes and helps Buff, so I guess we're going to get a six-man at some point. <laughs> there was nothing to the show. Nothing. Absolutely goddamn nothing. Let's just roll along now. Uh, there's footage of Tank Abbott and Rick Steiner on motorcycles. And Buff Bag... Or, not Buff Bag. Well, Chuck Palumbo <coughs> and Sean Stasiak, two Buff guys, are making fun of them. Oh, we're just going to go to the bar. Da, da, da. They keep making bike references. And then, oh yeah, they beat them up. Tanks like the Miracle videotape. That was taped a couple hours ago. That just... Why? Why are they feuding? Why is everybody just suddenly feuding with everybody? Did they just give up? Because this is the Thunder right after Great American Bash, and they had nothing. They had nothing at this point. 
then we get Russo being scared by Scott Steiner and runs and goes over a roof and everything and didn't go out of the company. We would have been better off if Vince Russo had never gone to WCW or been in wrestling in general. We then get Canyon in a wig, positively Canyon. Here's Mike Awesome, and he makes one of DDP. Actually, not that bad of a DDP impression. And then we have Mike Awesome Canyon versus Rick and Tank, which sounds like a bad version of Rick and Morty. And then here's Scott Steiner to save, because Rick Steiner took a uh, you know took the chain shot that uh, Tank Abbott was going to try to hit uh, hit Scott with in the asylum match. Yet Rick and Tank are still friends, and now Scott and Rick are friends. And why is this happening? Why is this happening? What is going on? Russo then gets scared by Nash in uh, Ernest Miller's office. Kidman then talks about what happened on Nitro, and he's not aligned with the new blood anymore. Kidman versus Jeff Jarrett, WCW Championship. Kidman gets Pyro for whatever reason. I got nothing against Kidman. I just always thought he was a middle-of-the-card guy. Filthy Animals appear. Oh, no. We get the Filthy Animals that are going to align with Kidman, except they won't. Tigress doing whatever fucking accent she was doing. Like, I really didn't under I don't understand what some people say. I really don't fucking understand. She made no sense. She went from Hispanic to stereotypical black to Portuguese to, like, freaking, you know, India. I mean, she went everywhere with this goddamn accent. It made no sense. Pick an accent and stick with it. And what the fuck? I mean, what? You're not trying to do different monologues, you know, performing for... to get, you know, to do an audition for a stage play. Pick an accent and stick with it. Don't do about 50 million accents, even though there aren't that many. Then uh, they tur the filthy animals turn on Kidman because how dare he go off on his own and we get stroke for three. So that's been helping Kidman. All this stuff has helped Kidman be further buried down the card. Then Nash uh, gets a leather strap and chokes out Jeff Jarrett. No wonder Chris Benoit came up with the inspiration seven years later. Vampiro then talks about Sting. He pie faces a fan and then somebody in a Sting mask suddenly spray uh, takes it off and sprays blood at him. It's Asia. Remember Asia? Asia with a Y. Because China. Because WCW is now copying WWE like crazy. Not that there weren't copying, you know, there wasn't copying from both. But boy, WCW was setting the trend at one point and now they're just copying everything. And Asia, bless her, wasn't really all that good. Oh, suddenly the Kiss Demon shows up. I guess him and Asia were apparently engaged. Now, I don't know if that was storyline or actually are, they actually were engaged and actually got married. And if so, congratulations to them. I don't give a shit about the characters, but good on the people. Uh, this was bad. Uh, Asia then attacks and gets a nail in the coffin. While the Kiss Demon could clearly stop Vampiro, and he fucking doesn't. And it's fucking hilarious. Vampiro then gets locked in the demon casket thingy, you know, the Iron Maiden thing or whatever with all the spikes and all the spikes are on the outside or whatever. Daphne then shows up in her black wedding dress. Daphne looking freaking smoking. And is upset at David and calls out Miss Hancock. And then Miss Hancock comes out and we get a cat fight, cat fight, cat fight. Ooh. And then the camera um, cuts around a lot during this. I don't know if it was because of wardrobe malfunctions or if they got Kevin Dunn to come in for one night and do uh, the camera work for WCW. But then get David and Crowbar, and we get a low blow to Crowbar, and this isn't the last time we see this contest either. We get Russo being stalked again by Nash. Scott Steiner versus Ernest Miller. R&B security are there with a straight jacket that they don't use, or some kind of jacket. Um, they attack Scott at some point. The freaks attack Ernest Miller, which is all that he's good for, is being attacked and being laid out because Ernest Miller is a piece of shit and a goddamn worthless trash heap in the ring. Like, seriously, and he was one of the most annoying people on the goddamn mic, too. You know, people like him do not have the charisma to justify the TV time that they get because they were only there because of nepotism. And Ernest Miller is a perfect example. He is one of those people that is only there because of nepotism. Same with David Flair, but at least David Flair had a famous dad. If Ernest Miller had not helped, I guess, train Garrett Bischoff in karate or something, then he wouldn't have been featured on the show. And, you know, sure, Ernest Miller may be a nice guy. Should have never been in wrestling. Same with Mongo McMichael. In fact, I put them both on the same level. Because Mongo, at least, was an athlete. What was Ernest Miller? You know, an, an attempt to annoy the piss out of everybody? Because he wasn't an annoying heel. Like, I can't wait to get his a him to get his ass kicked. No, I just want this stupid fuck off TV so maybe we get somebody with some goddamn charisma and athletic ability on here. Three-time world karate champion. whoop de fucking do Who the fuck cares about that? Um... Maybe you shouldn't have mentioned three-time world karate champion or whatever because he was a three-time karate champion. Three Ks. Maybe you don't say that. Maybe you don't. But anyway, Steiner Recliner beats him, but Ernest Miller's commissioner gets upset and 
bans the bans it, saying it's an illegal chokehold. Says he will find Scott Steiner or fire him next time he uses it and awards himself the match. So why even have matches if they, you can just reverse decisions? Nash and still has Jeff Jarrett tied up. Calls, calls Scott Hall on the phone, calls him, and says, "Hey, I want ideas on how to deal with Jarrett." Well, I can't do that. It's illegal in 50 states. I can't shoot him. Somehow, I actually believe he was talking to Scott Hall at this point. Crowbar versus David Flair. This is the longest match of the show at about seven, eight minutes. I'm not kidding. And we get a dive by, uh, by Crowbar onto a chair where David was sitting on it. And then we get the statue to the head, the you know Statue of Liberty. This one didn't shatter like the one that Vince Russo grabbed, which is weird because Vince Russo has no strength or grip ability or anything besides... I mean, he can't grip his goddamn dick because he doesn't have one. I mean, I don't know how the fuck he fathered any of those kids. I think the mother, I think I think his wife must have, you know, must have slept with somebody that actually is a real man that actually was able to father kids. So they aren't your kids, Russo. How do you feel about that? So then, yeah, uh, he tries to shave Crowbar's head. Daphne shows up. She gets shoved down. Hancock and Daphne get in our scrap. So, yeah, they're just repeating the same stuff. It's a Mobius strip of, of thunder and then... Yeah, shaving crowbars. Hey, we get that. We get Nash of Jarrett and Ray makes deliverance references, threatens to do a lot of bad things to him. And then Russo shows up with Hall's contract, says, You leave Jarrett alone or I'm going to tear up this contract. Even though Scott Hall has not been on program on WCW programming since, what was it, Super Brawl 2000? And would not be on programming again. They just basically let him sit home and sit out his contract. And then Goldberg sneaks in while Nash is watching on the giant video screen. So that is exactly what happens there. So, yeah, that's basically what happened. And, you know, Nash Nash gets laid out by Goldberg, and that's it, and we get that, and we get Jared attacking it. This is bullshit. This is a bullshit thunder. That's all I have to say about that. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.